Our final presenter this evening is a Houston-based artist who, develops a renowned, who has developed a renowned national and international community-based arts projects, a MacArthur Fellow and former National Council on the Arts member, among many other honors. Rick Lowe is also an Associate Professor of Art at the University of Houston. Project Row Houses, a community platform enriching lives through art in Houston's Third Ward is now celebrating its 25th year. The New York Times Sunday Magazine described it as one of the most original and an ambitious works of art of the past century. So let's see if he can change our perspective on what art can and should do for the world, world in five minutes or less. Please welcome Rick Lowe. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, so um, social sculpture. Anybody ever hear that term? I know there's two people out there that have. <laughs> um, okay, so there's a German artist that defined um, this, developed this term social sculpture um, in which he defined as the way in which we shape and mold the world around us. And, um, and I interpreted that in terms of how we build community, that we have, that we can all build community like it's sculpture. But the other thing that this guy, Joseph Boyce, added to the, that description was that he said that everybody is an artist and everybody needed to do what they do as if they were artists if we're going to shape the world as a beautiful sculpture. And so Project Row Houses came out of that. So I'm going to give three little examples here. Project Row Houses is the first, um, my first effort in terms of social sculpture. And, uh, and it started, you know, basically... Um, the essence of it is basically it kind of captured some aspect of the African-American community as history and reformatted it in a sense and reintroduced it in a more poetic sense. So the old shotgun house, something that most people have a very negative, uh, uh, the, well, the, the term has a very negative connotation, but after you look deeper into its history, you find a poetic uh, existence of that term and how uh, the shotgun house moved to the U.S. through the slave trade and all of that, and start trying to incorporate that into uh, a new uh, place in which we've done. And, uh, and so now the idea of the shotgun house is not such a frightening thing, and it's also influencing the way that the other parts of the neighborhood is developing. Now, but that's on a large scale, but on the small scale within Project Row Houses, everything is changing or everything moves based on this idea of everybody as an artist. I mean, trying to figure out how Project Row Houses could be a platform to encourage, explore, or identify the creativity among people who are in the neighborhood that can help shape it as uh, social sculpture. And I'm gonna do two, uh, two examples. This one is a, uh, a man by the name of Eugene Howard who uh, came back to the Third Ward after being in prison for over 20-something years, and um, a person who had uh, uh, a college dropout, he really didn't know how to read or write, and um, when he came back to the neighborhood, he was trying to figure out how to fit in, where he, where he could fit. And one day I was talking to him about his life and what would he, his dreams have been if he could start over again, and he said that, he would have liked to own a restaurant because he loved cooking. And so one day I made up this little poster of him in the way that he dreamed of himself as, uh, as a cook. And, and it's, he called himself brother-in-law because that's a whole other story too because he thinks he's a very sexy guy and he's going to like marry your sister or something. <laughs> anyway, but, um, <clears throat> but anyway, so, but, but, shape, but doing this as a little gesture for this guy um, kind of infused something in him that grew his partic participation in the community in a way that uh, he had never participated before. So, so this little poster became popular, and so we made it into aprons, we made it into t-shirts and mugs and so on and so forth, and he became a real leader in the community, uh, an example of someone who's coming from a place of hardship and actually contributing in a very respectful way. Then the other one is um, a woman named Asada Richards who was, you know, basic, she was, Project Door had just started a transitional housing program for single mothers. She was homeless at the time, and, um, and she came into that program as a very angry person and realized that she could not make any contributions to, she couldn't even sustain her own life and her child uh, from that anger perspective. So she was looking for a shift. She came into the program, she was on academic probation at University of Houston. She ended up completing 
after being in that program, working with her, that she, she started to understand that that program was challenging her to look at her life as if it was a work of art. And she had to transform it every day. And so using that, she was able to finish her studies at the University of Houston, went on and uh, she, got a P she got a full scholarship to a PhD program at Penn State in which she ended up teaching at the University of Pittsburgh for a couple of years. She came back to Houston to work with Project Row Houses and in the Third Ward community. And, uh, and after a few years of doing that, she caught the attention of a number of people and she was actually invited by um, one of the previous mayors to be a vice chair of the uh, Houston Housing Authority. And then on the, the last year she was, I mean the last mayor invited her to be the chair of his new housing committee. Asada Richards. Thank you.